Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Trek Cannon. So I figured I'd take a little time out of my day-to-day -day working on the flight line and on the aircraft, take a little break before it gets entirely too hot, to talk a little bit about Star Trek, the timelines and the uh, corrections that were made in the last episode of Strange New Worlds where they went back in time and we got to know about La'an, uh, we got to know a little bit about Kirk, and we got to know a little bit about Khan Union C and by extension the eugenics wars and all that kind of stuff so in that episode they gave two very important pieces of information one an actual date for the eugenics wars and two they gave information about the temporal war that was fought and how different species in the temporal war have been messing with time now there's been a lot of questions well two questions that have been real paramount one um them changing canon from Space Seed's uh, date of 1996 to 1997 for the eugenics wars, which is, of course, past, to uh, the update in Strange New Worlds is it being in the early two, you know, 2000s. Now, and the other one being the touch-ons on the uh, Temporal Wars. So, let's talk about some crazy stuff. You know, I could give you guys all kind of excerpts from Wikipedia and stats on this and all that stuff, but that's not what we do on this channel. What we do on this channel is we talk about canon. We talk about how canon affects canon with this show and this show. And other. so let's talk about canon and how crazy the timeline is in Star Trek. So a lot of people think that, um, time travel in Star Trek began in the next generation. It did not. Time travel in Star Trek began in the original series in an episode, I believe it was The Naked Time, where Kirk, well, where Spock and Scotty formulated time warp, okay? Now, ever since time warp, we got a chance to meet different uh, people and in different instances of how to go for and back through time. We've met time agents, you know, all types of things, right? But let's talk about some canon events because like i said that's what we do on this channel i would go so far as to say that the zero point for all star trek the zero point for all star trek takes place during the years of the temporal war why do i say this because during the age of the temporal war is when the united federation of planets basically became gods all right they became masters of the timeline so how did Star Trek, how did the Federation get from uh, primitive time warp calculations and formulas, right, all the way up to being able to scan the entire timeline, beam people back and forth through time, and have the mastery of time that they do? Now, it could be two, you know, causes for this. One, we all, we all know that... Um, that uh, all kinds of technological advances happen, happen during war, right? So we could say that, well, they got this advance during the Temporal War. But there's a lot of things in canon that would suggest that the Federation was very good at time travel way before the Temporal War. And I liken you guys to the episode of The Next Generation where that guy uh, was pretending to be a time traveler to come back and take a look at uh, this instance on The Next Generation on a, in an enterprise, but he ended up being a dude that was stealing stuff, all right? And what he said is, is that he got that vessel from the future, from an archaeologist. So from those from that particular episode, we can assume that the Federation had started using time travel, at least for archaeological purposes, all right, during uh, the events before the Temporal War. So they were very good at time travel before the Temporal War. People like Gary Seven, all right? But let's talk about that because a lot of people don't know who Gary Seven is, all right? But I ain't going to go into that. I want you to look them up. But let's talk about Gary Seven. Let's talk about the Temporal War. Let's talk about time agents. All right. And let's talk about canon. See, the thing is, is that a lot of people forget that there's a species in Star Trek canon that is also very, very, very adept at time travel. And Starfleet and the Federation has had several run-ins with um, representatives of this particular species throughout Star Trek canon. Now, for those of you who don't know, Star Trek, Star Trek canon encompasses more than just Star Trek, the original series, Star Trek Enterprise, Star Trek Next Generation, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, Star Trek Voyager, Prodigy, um, Strange New Worlds. Uh, you know, it, it encompasses 
more than that. It includes the animated series and it includes the uh, the um, the comic books. All right. Now, way back in the day, it was put into canon that the Federation ran across, like I was saying, a very important species who were who were very, very good at time travel. And that is the Gallifreyans. All right. Who is the Gallifreyans? I remember them in Star Trek because the Gallifreyans are from Doctor Who. Doctor Who and Star Trek exists in the same canon. All right. Look it up. Look it up. Uh, you know, uh, look it up. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, the X-Men and Marvel series also exists in canon in the Star Trek universe. All right. Uh, Spock gave uh, Wolverine a Vulcan nerve pitch. Pitch. Yeah, he did. All right. Doctor Who hung out with Picard and Kirk. Yeah, he did. Now, that being said, it could be, and I'm going to base this entirely on the fact that it exists in canon, that one of two things happened. Sometime during the future, uh, the Federation opened up true dialogue and uh, actually were invited to Gallifrey where they learned their technology. I'm not going to say Section 31 was able to uh, take uh, Gallifrey and technology because we know how the Gallifreyans are about their technology. All right. It also could be that um, once the TARDIS appeared on the Enterprise, the Enterprise scanned the TARDIS and was able to develop the technology that way. Think of it as with, uh, say, the Daedalus class vessel. All right. Uh, the first Daedalus class vessel was in Voyager and it was a, a construct made by an alien species. But the Daedalus vessel uh, that Voyager scanned became one of the starships models that was used by Starfleet. OK, so we all know that Starfleet is very good. And the Federation is very good at adapting and incorporating technology into their own. Now, that being said, that opens up so many possibilities in Star Trek canon because there's so many instances where we'd be like, hey, why didn't the uh, USS Relativity stop this situation? Things like uh, things like in Nemesis or things like where J.J. Uh, Abrams broke the timeline with the uh, Romulan vessel coming back in time. It's a lot of situations where you would think that the USS Relativity or ships like it would have intervened. Now, one, who's to say that they did not? Two, who's to say that they didn't use their high-speed sensors to be able to detect things like this and know what's going to be the outcome anyway and whether or not they should or should not have to intervene all right that being said okay gary seven could it be that gary seven was a gallifreyan he you know we never got any medical data on him but it's possible that gary could have had two hearts all right it's a lot of things in canon that would suggest that gary seven was gallifreyan but he didn't have a time travel box not all TARDISes look like that. As a matter of fact, the only reason that the TARDIS looks like the phone box is because this chameleon uh, node had got stuck in that particular thing. But the TARDIS can look basically like anything it wants to look like. Hell, it looked like the second floor of an apartment building once. All right. So what else does that open up? So we know that people were coming back in time to mess with the Federation's timeline during the Temporal Wars to offset the uh, evolution and the progress made by humans. Okay, so one of the one of the theories in Star Trek is, or one of the big questions in Star Trek is, where did the Borg come from? All right, now the Queen of the Borg could use many, 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 right uh, uh, avatars when she represents herself, but she chooses to represent herself as a humanoid. Okay, humanoid. Now, first of all, um, there's a lot of different species in Star Trek that are not humanoid. There's a lot of different species with higher mobility and uh, more effective uh, body styles and structures than a humanoid. Why did she choose that? Now, if you think about the Borg's purpose, what is the Borg's purpose? Perfection. All right. Perfection. How do they achieve perfection? They assimilate technology and they assimilate biology. All right. Assimilate to take into your own okay so can you imagine that if during one of the times of uh temporal incursion or uh from the temporal war sometime during the history of the planet earth right that uh the 
Borg were created. All right. Uh, a bastardization of Idic, the extreme form of infinite diversity and infinite combinations that the Federation has. All right. Instead of going out and learning, won't we just assimilate these people and we will become the, the perfect representatives of Idic? All right. If you think about the Borg Collective, uh, they are thousands of different species. OK, using their technology, using their biology. And, it, and if you think about it, that is the extreme bastardization of the mission of the Federation to seek out new life and new civilizations. All right. Um, that's probably why a lot of people relate the origins of the board to V'ger because of the bastardization of his programming. All right. Now, that being said, that being said, so we could consider most of the things that happen in Federation history, right, has been influenced by the temporal war. That being the zero point of everything that happens from the beginning of time to the end of time. You could even go so far as to say that the, the, the temporal war, uh, at some point during the temporal war, they tried to destroy Earth before humans even existed, right? which caused the calamities that made the Hoth leave Earth in their uh, in their uh, generation ships, okay? So it could be a lot of things contributed just from this one episode of Strange New Worlds and the things that was said to the canon of Star Trek and the time travel aspects of Star Trek and where time agents are, where they come from, who they could possibly represent and tying all of canon together in, in this, not just using Wikipedia or one of the field of series that people have seen, but all of it. But anyway, tell me what you guys think, um, if you guys agree. And I got to get back to work, man. I got a lot of engine stuff to do. But anyway, you guys be cool. Thanks for watching. And as always, peace, recycle, and say the whales.